Uh, my name is Linda Stage. I've lived here at Parkview Villa for six years. Um, before that, I was homeless. I'm on the resident council here. I do a lot of volunteer work here in the building and am working um, hard to get Bring It Home Minnesota passed. What would that mean for you? Like, what would you be able to do if that gets passed that you haven't been able to do so far? Um, I could maybe get a car. I had to give up my car. I um, couldn't afford to keep my car, so I had to sell my car. And that was a big blow because I lost my, some of my independence and my mobility. Um, so that would be a huge deal. Yeah. And with things the way they are and prices getting higher, um, I find that I'm also restricting the kind of foods I buy. Um, it's hard, and these aren't necessities, but it's hard to buy treats, fruit, is hard to get. It's so expensive. Um, protein is expensive. And it's, it's just been difficult. I was in um, an abusive marriage. And when my husband left and took everything, I was homeless. I, look, I call when I knew I was going to be homeless, I must have called 50 places, truly. I have the list back in the apartment. And it was a really, really hard time. And stable housing at that time would have made all the difference in the world. I could have dealt with what was going on with me as it was. I was diagnosed with diabetes, and I know where to put my insulin. You know, what do you do with it when you're homeless? I was also on a drug called Humira for colitis, and that needs to be refrigerated. What do you do? You know, and I don't think people think about that, that, that it's not just not having a place for you. It's having a place for everything. Um, before the divorce, I have two grandsons that are six months apart, and they used to come and spend weeks and weeks with me in the summer. And we couldn't do that anymore. And that affected them too. And it was just, it was hard for everybody. So stable housing would have made a huge difference. And especially now after COVID and with all the inflation and everything, um, a lot of us, me too, are one paycheck away from losing our homes. And that's why it's important to have that help in place so people don't have to go through that. And it is stressful, even when you're living paycheck to paycheck. That's a stress people don't think about. Because, um, I mean, I can manage without a car, but there are people who can't. And what do you do? Do you not eat? Do you not get your meds? Do you get your car fixed? But we do have it in our power, especially now with the surplus, to fix it. If I was a voter and I was trying to decide what to vote on, or where our resources would go, what would you want me to know about this, this bill? That I would want you to know that it could be you. That you may be stable now, but if something would happen and you'd lose your job or you'd not be able to work, you could go through your savings so quickly. So just remember, like I said, that, that there's no guarantee that, that it's not going to be you. And we need to take care of our own. Homeless people aren't lazy. Homeless people, most homeless people did not make a choice to be homeless. They were forced to be homeless. And when you look at, at if you don't have a doctor, you use the emergency room as a convenience clinic. And the cost of that, the cost of kids not getting an education and being stuck in the welfare system for the rest of their lives. And you look at those costs 
and what they want and bring it home is a drop in the bucket compared to what homelessness is going to cost in the long run. I'm sure there are people up in the Iron Range and up there who are cold and hungry and how you could let your constituents be that way is beyond me. You know, you're supposed to care about the people where you live. And it, do it doesn't feel to me like they do. Yeah, passing this Bring It Home bill um, shows support for your constituents. It shows you care about their lives, about how they're living, about the choices they have and the choices they can make. And it seems like to me, you pass, bring it home, Minnesota, and you've got people on your side. And if you want to get reelected, these people are going to go to bat for you.